many laps do you get for 30 grand? Right, it's like a dollar fifty per lap. That's yeah. like nine hundred dollars cheaper than drifting per lap. <laughs> Self clearancing is yeah, pretty sick. That's how All the stance guys right there, dude. Perfect. No bacon fender. That thing is huge. Wait, the paddle shifting and the steering wheel controls are Bluetooth? Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. That's a wild build, dude. How many hours you got into this thing, you think? Quick counting. Years. get for 30 grand it's easier to just count it by the lap right it's like a dollar fifty per lap are you kidding me yeah it's a good that's deal. like nine hundred dollars cheaper than drifting per lap <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, is it really yes yeah I did the math on my car and it was depressing I'm like I think I pay like well I don't my partners and yeah. everybody pay like twelve hundred dollars a lap oh I yeah just you guys do like 12 laps yeah I won an <laughs> event last weekend and I had full three one more times, and I still only did 24 laps, and it cost 60 grand. Yeah. That's way more than I even just said it was. Yeah, that's, that's a bad Don't deal. do the math, that's let's a not bad talk deal. about yeah. it. Anyways, this is Chris Rom. He Hello. is the owner of Rom Innovations. They build a lot of cool shit here, super cool stuff. It is stuff that I've never even seen before. So we're gonna give you guys a tour, check it out, and uh, look at some race cars, some street cars, some in between, and uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so what is this thing? I know it's a Mustang. I know it has basically the same motor as my FD car in there. Yeah, FR9, but with a carburetor. That's fine. Yeah. I use the same manifold, we just do fuel injected up top. Yeah, well that was like the main thing for the FR9, it was a designed to be fuel injected. Right. Um, so we, we ran ITBs on our last motor setup and then went back to the, the basically like 5100 style setup and yeah. like it drives way better with the yeah. carb style setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think with the ITBs you just get way too much reversion on the cam. Exactly, yeah. and we run a lot of nitrous so I think it ends up wasting a lot of nitrous. Yeah. Like when we put this manifold on, or this style manifold, it's not the same one, but yeah. um, I literally pulled like 40% duty cycle of nitrous solenoid out down low because yeah. it hit so hard, it was crazy. Yeah, when that, the bottom of that manifold acts like a toilet bowl, collects all the liquid fuel and then when it needs it. Got it. it <laughs> That's why you gotta keep it cool underneath. So this motor is in a TA, no, what is this? What is this, this is car? like a new class, this is XGT. What does that mean? So. This is better than a TA2 and better than a TA1, mostly because we're selling it. But <laughs> well, I have driven. I drove a TA2 car, yeah. and I, it was fast. It's, it stopped okay, but it drove like a bus. Yeah, and so the biggest thing between a TA2 car and this car is the wheels and tires. So it has. It doesn't have like a 15-inch wheel setup. Yeah, it looks sick. So it has bigger brakes. Has real tires on it rather than like you know stock car tires. Okay. Uh, and then it has an FR9 instead of like a streetcar motor that was turned into a race car motor. Right. So, and like, what's the power limitations? So these, obviously, unrestricted, they make 800-ish. We run like a car plate restrictor that makes them like 620. So. And then like, what's the torque? Uh, it's right, same. Same, right? Yeah. Okay, so and it actually makes a tick more torque than our motor NA. Yeah. Um, but then like a little less horsepower NA up top on the restrictor plate. Yeah, and most guys that drive these compared to a TA2 car or like a Porsche, they're like, this car is like driving an electric car. The you torque. Just, you just push the gas pedal and it's just flat. Go, yeah, it's yeah. flat the whole way. Yeah, it's cool. That's like fun and not fun at the same time. But yeah. when you're endurance racing and trying to put laps down, you want the same power no matter where you're at yeah. the RPM for the drivability. And it'd be the same. As long as it's above 4,000 RPMs, it's exactly the same. And you rev it's like 85 or 9 or something? Yeah, we can rev them higher than that. They're like 90, 90, well, it depends. They're like... The rules are like floating around right now, okay. but yeah, like we run them to like nine-ish all the time, okay. no problem. They can run way higher. Yeah. But like on this engine, if you run it higher, just like in like when NASCAR uses it, you're not making power. You're just using spending the, money. The, well, it's for the gearing. Okay. Because you're like limited. So you don't have to shift. Yeah, you're limited on gearing, so you're just keeping. You're running out more RPM, so you don't have to shift. So as a GSR in it, it looks like Andrews. Andrews. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, it is Andrews. Yeah. The color is the G-Force color. Yeah. That's what threw me off. Got it. Yeah. So, 
That's sick. It's kind of like offset almost too. It looks like. Car, yeah, we have yeah. the the engines offset and pushed back okay. more than like a regular TA2 car. I I was driving last weekend just talking about this engine and like I got 290 288 water temp in it mm -hmm. and I was like I left the line at 260 something and I was like this motor's broached now it's done good. it didn't care at all yeah. that's like normal yeah so the FR9 is the big thing that they developed over the other older motors was they wanted to run them hotter so that you can run more tape so yep. that you can run more downforce. So that right. was the whole point. So they engineered it to run at that temp. Yeah. I don't know if ours are still engineered to run at that temp. These these things were like made with like cometic, like they're like literally they were like, let's figure out the head gasket that we can use and then we'll build the engine around that. Yeah. So I guess normal peak operate, like normal efficiency of that is like 270, right? Yeah, we run them That's, 200 because okay. we don't live need forever. to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, this engine lasts a whole season and then some That's because amazing. of the restrictor and because of the heat. It's got to last a whole season too because it's like 55 or 60 grand by the time you're done bolting everything to it. Yeah. So, and then are they still like 348 cube? Yeah, or? the limit's 355 for the okay. class. So they're, unless it's been like sleeve, they're like 350 ish somewhere. Yeah, like. cool. That's good. Yeah. Sweet front mount radiator with some ducting and stuff. And like, you build these chassis like in Portland? Yeah, these are all built down at like CEI. Okay. So, and what? So what makes the chassis different than like a TA car? So a TA car is built similar. So this is like kind of between a TA car and a stock car. Where a TA car is going to be like a square two perimeter chassis that like they just like this car is two hundred grand. The modern TA1 cars, like a Riley, is like $600,000. Okay. And it's because everything's just more complicated. You know, Correct. they have exposed bell housings. The, the dry sump drives off the input shaft of the transmission. It's, okay. It's just like... That's crazy. Yeah, just more stuff to break. Yeah. So this, this was a prototype car. We have four of these that are like this. There's 10 more coming, but the next ones are all what we call a straight rail. So it won't have the perimeter out here. This, okay. This frame rail right here goes straight back. Got it. So and that, we'll have these bars in here. Well, you'll have the protection bars and then we'll run a door bar for intrusion, but that actual perimeter chassis. Oh, I see the outer square yeah, box. Okay. So it'll away. be more like traditional center frame type. Deal. Yeah. That's cool. And what about like all the suspension on this? It's double A arm? Yeah, double A arm. Just like normal stock car stuff like you'd see on anything. Everything's adjustable very quickly. Yeah. That's nice. Dang, got the Swift Springs on here, dude. Mm -hmm. Fancy. This car's running like uh, like a Packer setup, so you run a big and a little, and then Packer's front and rear. Yep, that's cool. So like the it's got like a far a long arm that goes forward, like in these, or it's double no, in it, the rear. No, it's, it's a three link. Okay, on the three top. link in the rear. Okay. Yeah, sweet. And it's a nine inch Ford. <laughs> okay. All the TA2 stuff is all quick change. I was gonna say, yeah, the quick and change stuff works well, but the nine inch keeps the cost down, or what's the no, not at the all. Like inch? the the TA two stuff, everything with a quick change, we end up uh, breaking a lot of stuff on wheel hop under okay. braking. Oh. And so you like break Gleason units because we're not allowed to run lockers in them, and so you actually like shear the Gleason unit in half. Are you breaking? Yeah, are you break like they'll blow up the whole tube or. And it's all from under braking. Like they don't make enough power to do. Yeah, anything. the quick changes are pretty strong on power. So yeah. So under braking, nose dives down, and you get like kind of like a skipping like yeah. the axle hop deal. Yeah. And you can't. I guess you balance that with the anti squat then to make the car still good to drive it's and usually, not have that. Yeah, it's usually driver to be honest. Okay. Like there's guys that'll never break a rear end, and then there's guys that break three rear ends a weekend. Got it. And you can't. So it breaks the Gleason unit. Yeah. And then, but can you run a spool or no? You can. They don't turn. They very just don't well. turn well. Yeah. Right. You gotta like try but even, like a Porsche then. Even then and some of the old like 2016, 2017, we tried other stuff and then you just end up breaking axles or tube ends or you just break something else. There are a couple people that make like clutch type discs for those. Yeah, we talked about trying those and we just never did because of yeah. the cost. We tried them in drifting and they work great, but they don't have a 35 spline output shaft. They only have the lower count ones, so then we break, break the them. output yeah. shafts silly stuff that's how it works yeah we've been pretty lucky though with the current quick change stuff i've only lost one in the last like probably three or four years and it's like 1300 or 
horsepower of the tire. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, we but a, we don't do the braking thing. Yeah. Um, but it's funny that you said that because like some people have broken quick changes with a lot less power. And I wonder if it's because of the hand braking and shit. Yeah, most likely it's the rocking or the, yeah. the changing or like if you slow roll. I don't know if you guys can slow roll tires like a road race guy, but I'm assuming you could, right? What does that mean? Where you would almost lock it up, but it's not locked. You like slow roll. Oh yeah, it. we do do that, but usually clutches in at that point. Oh okay, so then it's not. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit different, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely all similar in the, in the setup things. That's cool. So Andrew's gearbox. So this is the same drivetrain as in my FD car. Yeah. Yeah, we run an Andrew's and a hundred cubic inch bigger motor version of that motor, basically. That's yeah. pretty sick. What else about the chassis is cool? So I got you said three link rear, six dry sump tanks back there, nine inch. Yep. So do you have, can you run like cambered ends or anything on yeah. here? Yeah, they're all cambered and towed. So you just weld on ends that allow you to run like the same style style deal as the quick change. Yeah, it's exactly, ends. you just have a, yeah, you can rotate it for the alignment. Sick. And then this arrow, this wing looks different than the TA stuff. Yeah, that this is a TA wing rather than a TA2, so this okay. is like more downforce. Got it. Mustang, dude. I like the tail lights printed, but then inset in here quick detail. What does this guy do? That's the fuel cell then. Oh, okay. So that's at the start it. of the race, that's where you see all the fuel yeah, pouring out. Pouring out <clears throat> when you take off. Yeah, it runs a 36 gallon cell. Because How long have, are the races? Uh, 100 miles or 75 minutes. Okay. So you use all that fuel. Oh, all, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all gone by the end. These Sweet. motors get pretty good. These get a little bit better fuel mileage than the, the RO7s, the GM stuff. Because okay. we have Camaros too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, we like these better than the GM stuff, but like the GM stuff has won just as many races. As yeah, stuff, so it's, like it's a little different power band too, just the design of it and stuff. The heads yeah. are a little different. They're all really capable. I mean, yeah. I can't believe the Busar motor takes. Yeah. Because our motor literally is <coughs> prepped and built to like do what we do, but it's still the same block, same head, same everything. Yeah. And while the heads don't matter when you're spraying that much nitrous in them to make oxygen, but it's still like they just take it all day. We get a whole season out of the motor at like five, six hundred horsepower more than what it's supposed to make. Yeah. Yeah, usually these two, like you take them apart at the end of the season and it's like the bearings are fine. Yeah. Like if you didn't take it apart, you would have just like, you're like you could reuse them if you wanted. Right, like, right, right. It's other little shit. Yeah, you know? it's like lifters, springs, and like cams. Right. Like cams will go flat on them, but that's not. The cams are cheap though. Yeah, and it's They're like, not even expensive. We were talking about that because we were like, man, I'm like, we need a bigger cam in our car because we're spraying so much nitrous in it. And it's like, we don't need to make mid-range. We can make mid-range with the nitrous. Yeah. And uh, they're like, well, you got the biggest one already. And they're like, we get, you got the Talladega Super Speedway cam in there yeah. right now. And you're like, well, just give, how much does it to get a bigger one? And they're like, oh, like 600 bucks. And you're yeah. like, this is a $60,000 <laughs> motor and you're bitching about $600 yeah. to make more power? Like, yeah. jam that thing in there and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. We tested some of the like the big track stuff too, and for road racing, it's not good just because a lot of that stuff was designed as a restrictor plate motor. Right. So then you gotta, you know, it's it's just different. Yeah. When yeah. I was talking to the guys at Roush Yates at the time, Sandy does our motors now. I don't know if you know Sandy Wilkins, but he, uh, they were like, oh yeah, like we will just give you the biggest cam we make for non-restricted setup, and it yeah. still ends up being a restriction with how big the motor is. Yeah. Know? So. Like, oh, we gotta make something custom. Yeah, you're just gonna have to custom grind something. Yeah. So, like, I the craftsmanship is, like, awesome on this thing. Like you were saying earlier, you, it wasn't filming it, but there's, like, no real hardware showing or rivets or anything. It's all, like, proper fit. That's pretty sick. Yeah, this is nice, too. All the windshield stuff fitment's yeah. nice. Yeah, and the rear, the same thing. Yeah, you're right. There is no rivets or anything. The fitment's awesome. And the roof comes up. Yeah, and the only wires you see are into the dash, and that's it. Yeah, that's awesome. <coughs> oh yeah, it is cool. The containment seat setup too is nice. Yeah, that's got to help for sure. Yeah. And the top of the door piece comes off to get yeah. in and out. Look at that, fancy. Yeah, and that's one of the things we improved on these chassis is actually the drive on the back and the and is uh, we were ripping upper links out of the top of the chassis uh, like the other manufacturers like got it. like especially places like Laguna Seca where you can get like good grip yeah yeah so, kind of G it out a little yeah bit. so like at the end of the weekend it's like either the whole 
you know, center section would be cracked, or the whole third link would just be pulled out of the car. The side bite has to be better with that tire and wheel combo, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, it's got to have way more lateral grip. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah, this is definitely, like, the next step in that. Because when I drove a TA car, I was like, man, it's definitely a race car, but, man, it's, like, feels like it's 50 years old. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really do anything that great, except, like, put it down, leaving yeah. the turn. Like, every time I dive into the braking zone, I was like, all right, cool, it's going to stop. I'd turn, and I'd be like, maybe it's going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's yeah. not. And they kind of drive, like, trucks, too, where it's like, you, like, set it, it kind of set, maybe it didn't set. And then set. it does, like, one of these yeah, guys. Yeah, like, you're like, maybe it'll set by the time I'm done with this, and, and then it doesn't. And you're just feeding it yeah. throttle, and you're yeah. like, nope, i got to retreat. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it just, felt. You just do that for, like, 70 laps. And yeah. yeah and then you just well, and I talked to the dude that drives them all the time. He's like, nope, yeah, that's pretty normal. You yeah. just get used to the feel of when it's done and over. Yeah. Like, you're like, give up yeah. now. Like, you get better at that. And I'm like, okay. It's like, when do I know when to give up? He's like, turn a few hundred more laps. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're killing me. Yeah, seat time. So this is a 02, right? 2002? Yeah, 67. Yeah, sorry. I always do that because I know it's a 2002, but everybody watching, it's a 67 2002 BMW. Oh. So underneath this thing, I was looking at this immediately. I, I have not messed with O2s a lot, but like this isn't stock, right? Yeah, it is. That is? So they had a better Dips dual diff gear <laughs> than all of the ones after it? Yeah. And then this is all stock? Yeah. This is, like, well, obviously these you have these plates yeah. and the, like, they're, uh, serrated tabs on here yeah, so you can change the toe and camber well, that's similar to how e30 is but this looks like fabricated almost but it's just old bmw old, stuff old german stuff can you even buy these anymore no we have like a pile of them okay yeah, yeah you just collect them right yeah so yeah so this is basically e e30 ti like style e21 e21 okay this actually like an e21 style got it the dual year though that's cool yeah that looks so homebrew yeah well that's everything back then like for the crowds was just handmade like, yeah, right it was just like utilitarian yeah it's cool so what class is this race in uh it's vintage okay so so and then this original is, original style gearbox like? no it's a five speed out of an e21 e21 then, okay you know we fabricate this i was looking at this nice bracket too yeah and then this single is ear, dual ear on the transmission, or dual ear on the diff, single, single ear on the transmission. transmission. <laughs> Just switching stuff around here. Yeah. And then oh, that's a nice header with V band. Yeah. Cool. So those headers we build, those are okay. all jigged. Sick. An EM10. They fit like all the cars. Got it. And then this is M10 mode. Or yeah, M10? it's an M10. And what kind of power does that make? Like 150 ish. Oh, that's pretty good then. Yeah. That's not bad. That probably moves pretty pretty solid. Like yeah. this thing was smoke a spec Miata. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It'd be pretty close. Better tire. Oh yeah. yeah. It's the same tires. Yeah, similar tire and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. I like all the vintage stuff because it keeps these cars alive and you get to see a lot of like older like styles of building and, and specking out a car to handle yeah. well. You got to see like how they used to weld and like connect things with springs and like just bailing wire and that, yeah. that was like the race car, you know? Yeah, that is really cool. So AccuSum for the M10, they have oiling problems or just to keep it alive? Just to keep it alive. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a $300 safety yeah. net there. That's cool. Cool shirt. Is everything in the back of these cars for a weight management thing? Or is it just because it's easy that way? It's just easy that way. Got it. I didn't know if it like mattered, like the pendulum effect with these things with all the weight back here with the fuel cell oil and cool shirt and battery. That's a lot right there. It doesn't weigh down the tub on this old ass car. <laughs> no, no. The polar <laughs> moment of inertia stays pretty close. Okay, to cool. Was. Yeah. And then they run SM wheel and tire combo basically. Yeah. Yeah, because of the brakes. Some of the vintage cars have smaller brakes, so they'll run like a 13. The self clearancing is yeah, pretty sick. That's how speed. Oh, all the stance guys right there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No bacon fender. Yeah. It's dialed. Yeah, it's, it's always good to me when I see these. Like, this thing's been a race car for probably a pretty long time. I, most of it's adult life. But, like, that means, like, it's either been really well repaired or it hasn't been crashed that many times, which is pretty rare. Like, yeah. when you road race a car, there's lots of damage all the time, and this thing yeah. is really straight and true. So yeah. whoever's driving it either is really good at avoiding things or really good at driving at his means. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, it's actually a woman. Counts. Or of her yeah. means. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's so simple, too. All analog gauges. Oh, Bolton Cage? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen Bolton Cages in a while. That's vintage. Yeah, that's vintage for sure. They don't even let that. Yeah, yeah anything like new yeah. anymore. So like 150 wheel or 150 crank in this? Yeah, like 150 crank, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little more. That's cool. It's got big throttles on it though. Yeah. A little tiny alternator. Is that stock or is that like a motorsports one? That's like a motorsports one. Steering box still. Yep. Yeah, no steering. Can you that. get those tightened up and pretty good or no? Not really. No. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Like, kind of. It's like, like you get it to drive like a bad steering rack. Yeah. That's probably the best it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can make them better, but they're always pretty shitty. Yeah. yeah. I always found that like, especially in a road race car, because all that stuff gets so hot that like if you preload it too much. Yeah. Then it like starts <clears throat> binding and doesn't want to come back. Correct. So it's like a yeah. fine art of like setting that. Yeah. I like the linkage and stuff for this. It's nice. Simple productive big oil cooler in the headlight area this has got to be a lot of fun to drive yeah it probably dances all over the place even with 150 horsepower yeah and they do really well at like four wheel slides you know yeah. you can just rotate them and they just kind of go you watch like all the vintage racing and like they used to just slide the cars everywhere like the maximum amount of sliding they could do and still make it all the laps on the tires yeah and even still with all the technology and tires and suspension and all that all these cars still drive like that yeah. i feel like yeah exactly so it's a really good i don't know if that's really bad or really good but it's really fun to watch yeah it's fun to watch it's, it's definitely fun to, fun to drive yeah, yeah so it's funny like evolution has still balanced itself in like vintage racing with that stuff, it's cool. I was looking at the door bars <laughs> yeah. and some of the like uh, actual like frame of the car. Yeah, so you're like, oh, like, that's cool. the factory rocker. Well, it has to have that though. Yeah, and then this is the the, the original like NASCAR <laughs> style Trans Am door bars. Oh my god! You can see how many times it's been spiked. Yeah, <laughs> sleeve, been sleeve, wrecked so many sleeve, times. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. I like the the. Uh, four link set up over here just in the car to get the bolts dude. Yeah, you gotta pull the seat out to adjust it. Perfect. Yeah. Love it's that. It's really awesome. Vintage race cars are the best. You know, like you can look so at what look at the when links. was this first built into a race car? The seventies probably. Yeah. Early to mid seventies. What yeah. roof is this now? This is a hand formed aluminum roof. If you look under For there. what car though? Nothing. Oh, just, just whatever. Just, just to look like. Just it. blend the A pillar <laughs> to the C pillar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, if you looked, it's like all hand welded and formed aluminum. Oh yeah, no worries. Just uh, the oil lines running right in the side over here. Yeah, the oil goes inside the frame rail. And it does actually go inside the frame <laughs> rail. And it comes back out of the frame rail, so the okay. frame rail. It's is safe then. Yeah, in the old days, there was a lot more use of the chassis as like a fluid holding device. Holy shit, this thing makes some horsepower. Yeah, right out of that. That's thousand. a big boy motor. Yeah. How many cubes is that? 570. Wow. It's like two and a half inch primaries almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they get hot. Holy shnikes. Dude, that's sick. I like the TPS here. Yeah. That's that's really cute. On yeah. that tiny piece of string right by the yeah, headers. Yeah, string pot. <laughs> right by the header that hangs on yeah it's been there for a year or two what i yeah. won't touch it anymore because yeah, now, now it won't now <laughs> whoever owns this or runs it i'm sorry if that stops working because it's probably i just tapped it and that's it yeah so if you look the coolant used to run through the chassis too that's the old radiator was... why why not <laughs> the radiator is in the back now did you see that i saw a rear rad yeah that's cool that was that's a heat. big motor right there yeah. That's what we need in our FD car. Yeah. Let's get one of those. Size comparison, dude. Yeah, that thing is huge. What does that thing rev to? Uh, well, only... I guess it's limited by the intake, probably. You yeah. Need a whole nother well, one actually, of those carbs. It's, <laughs> it's actually limited by the piston speed. Oh, Because the okay. stroke is so short that you end up with like insane piston speed because the RPMs. Got so, it. Like, 75. Okay. But it's on at three, probably. Oh, yeah. 500. Yeah. It's you probably need a whole nother one of those carbs on there, dude. Holy shnikes, <laughs> dude. Do they? Yeah. It's over I've seen, thousand. that's crazy. Yeah. That thousand, that's pretty good. It made more, we changed the cam because it was undrivable at 1200. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> also we're gonna try to put that down through a chassis built in 1970 something. Yeah, exactly. It's 20 years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> Blade bar on the back. 
That's cool. Multiple links on there. I can see the stuff that's been added on here, and it's yeah. much nicer. Yeah. It gets better <laughs> it gets, as the welds get better. Yeah, as, as it gets newer, stuff gets a little bit better. That's a huge fuel cell, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, now cool. there's like a hand formed aluminum pan that sits here that feeds Over all the top air. Of down. All that. Yeah. Look at this muffler setup, dude. Staggered exhaust. Four inch, dual four inch. Yeah. Because the car mostly runs in California. Oh, right. So, so double big mufflers. Yeah, Laguna and Sonoma. On like it must that. sound good, though. Yeah, it sounds really good. Honestly, when you start muffling down like big motors that are always heard, straight yeah. piped, it actually, they always sound really good. Yeah. Because it kind of tunes something that's like can't really be tuned with the actual tuning, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's rowdy. CD1 ignition, dude. Yep. <whistles> Old school right there. Super staggered chassis, too, huh? The oh, motor's yeah. way the over there. Fits. Holy shit, the motor plates go to the dash bar. <laughs> yeah. It's got a front and a rear motor plate. I saw the front one. Yeah, so that's more like a stressed member for the car than it is to hold the motor. Look at that shifter, dude. That's like an old school Wiseman, like the old shuttle box, like the IMSA box. Oh, okay. It's a four speed then. Four speed, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Got the old aluminum big block adapter right there, too. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, starter had to get moved because of the exhaust. So Does this run an alternator on the drive shaft or no? I not anymore. Know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they run, some of the race cars run the alternator like off the drive shaft itself. Yeah. With the new stuff, we can like put the Bosch Motorsports and they're fine. Got the it. The older stuff, like the, dry, the alternators wouldn't live on the engines. Got it. So. I've seen people, you've upgraded the sway bar at some point recently. Yeah. Because all that fab looks a little nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the or newer, I guess it's not even like nicer. And then yeah. the double A arm, somebody obviously did that recently. Yep. Yeah. That lower arm, dude. Yeah, that was actually something we redid last year because it had like a a single arm with like a messed up sway bar mount. So. Got it. Long arm though. Yeah. The lower Same arm was crazy yeah. long. This is a splitter, obviously. Yep. Everything for this thing is like hand. -handed. Oh, everything's got to be custom. Yeah, like there's all the bu the bucks, you know, for the. The bumpers, the fenders, that whole thing is just molds and parts. And this is real deal race car building right here, dude. Dang, it's still cool though. It's like, I don't really need to race this in a class. Let's just make it badass yeah. exactly what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's rowdy. Those old tilting pedals. Yep, yeah. They've been repaired a few times. Yeah, cut, modified, they move, you know, clear the chassis. Yeah, or it was hit there pretty good. Yeah. It needed a new clutch pedal, and somebody needed an ankle. Like, you know, the, this car, like, look how expensive this dead pedal is. You know, it's like octagonal. Like, someone spent, like, two days building that Oh, my pedal. gosh, you're right. <laughs> like, well, none of them have the same planes, either. Yeah, exactly. That's like, holy yeah. shit, I didn't yeah. even think about that. Yeah. Dude, that is, like, ten hours yeah, in a dead pedal. For that dead pedal, and then you start looking at everything else, you're like... We call like this car like a billable hours car. It's like when you're behind on rent for the shop, you're like you go, <laughs> hey, you jump go, on that, <laughs> go bill some hours. It has an unlimited list forever, <laughs> yeah, and like, like let's get some of that done. And then the dude who owns it's like awesome. They're working on my car this week. Yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, what the hell is this thing? The Volvo. But like, <laughs> what is it? It's what's left of a Volvo. I could tell. So we were walking in. And I was like, what is that? Like a Aston Martin or something? I could only see like this part of it. Yeah. And like, this thing is crazy. It's a P1800. P8, I've seen these yeah. around before, but obviously big LS in it too. Yeah, full, is, full chassis. Is it like a tube chassis with this body or like full bolt-on bulkhead subframes? And no, so what we did is we took like a, like a front end that'd be like on a Trans Am car, like twin wishbone with a cross member for the steering rack. Like runs okay. the same steering rack and everything. And then, uh, we did that and then we did a rear subframe and then we cut the floor of the car and did a roll cage What's and the, the chassis. What's the rear subframe then? It's just a custom built for okay. a nine inch Ford. Nine inch Ford? Yeah, okay. with like a long link on the bottom. So okay. The, with a custom tranny cross member that connects it all. So then the frame rails are like, uh, they're not like a, um, they're not like a chunk of tubing. They're like things we fabricated that are just three sided that terminate into the factory 
floor supports. Okay. So got it like it. terminates so into the front half, it basically. Yeah, and then it goes the full length, and then it ties into the roll cage. So you can see the roll cage I was looking goes at through the splash pan and With everything. All the body work on it too, yeah. and everything. Super and then there's nice. A, there's an engine cage that goes over the whole thing. Okay. And then an Where air box. Are? Yeah, that's what those bolts are. Where's the air box go? Right here. Okay, off this. It's side. got like twin filters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So it just scoots right over the AC here. Yep. And filter there. So what size is this motor? Uh, it's like a 440-ish. What? Yeah. So it's a serious, like 600 horsepower yeah, setup. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. With AC, everything. AC. It has an acting sump hidden up here. I saw that in the in the front bumper. Acu sump all the things. You kind of need one with an LS though. Yeah, they're not like great. <laughs> they're not like great. I That's know a people good love way of them. putting it. They're like they are really good, but the oiling system yeah, and like, it's a lot of the stuff for LS is like made over. You know, it's just like kind of cheap. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like it's not like real race car parts. No, the so. engineering it, it could maybe not be cheap, but the engineering didn't take a lot of hours. Yeah. And of like the oil pans are like an afterthought. It's like, oh, we needed an oil pan that fit inside this car. I think it mostly stems from the fact that like people build them by like putting the pistons in backwards and not yeah. using a torque wrench and they live. Yeah, exactly. But they live. I yeah. guess it's a loose they term. Run. They yeah. run. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of just like falls over to like, oh, I have a 5.3, a turbo car that makes a thousand horsepower in a stock motor. You're like, sure, sure. but it doesn't <laughs> make it till 5,000 RPM. Yeah. So the bottom end isn't really getting hurt. And like, you just threw it together, but also let me drift it for a few laps yeah. and the there's going to be holes in the pan. Yeah, or if we put it on a dyno and right. load it. Like, put yeah, it on an it up. current dyno, it's going to Again, pop. I'm not talking yeah. shit. I'm just saying, I think that stems from that. Yeah. Um, but this looks like it's a real 440 setup, like good motor setup. Yep. Dang, okay, so the cage comes all the way back, the these bars. That's crazy. So the upholstery is obviously not done, but the cage will get underneath the upholstery. What gearbox is in it? 4L60D. Okay. And it has a hall tech. So it's on the standalone. Got it. I saw the rest of mod air in there too. That's cool. Is that steering wheel setup going in there with the paddle shifters for the 4L? Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. And it's Bluetooth, so that there's no wires. Yeah, I don't we'll see if it goes. Wait, the paddle shifting and the steering wheel controls are Bluetooth? Yeah, it probably works right now. Let's see if somebody lights up. Uh, yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. The bodywork on this thing is sick. Yeah, it's all custom glass. All the wind windows are made. Obviously, that's like a Porsche style wing. I was looking down. at that. So that's, see, that's not factory. No, that's controlled by the ECU. So we have to go up and down at different mile per hour. You gotta do it when you get on the brakes too. Yeah. And then it has a fire system because cars like this. Yeah, you don't want them to burn down. Yeah. I mean, dude, I talk to people all the time about that. I'm like, they're like, oh. I'm like, you spend six hundred dollars on some yeah. other stupid thing, and this like this might save your investment. Like, yeah. or not only that, your time. Yeah. Like, if you can stop a car from burning down, like you're saving two hundred hours on this car. Yeah, a it's thousand like five years. hours. Yeah, exactly. Like your whole life. Like you've dedicated this the amount of time it takes to raise a kid in the building. Yeah, almost. exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, and so the roll cage comes in here, and then like that over there is all the because it has hydraulic lifts on the front. Oh, to for raise like, the nose. Okay. Yeah. That's a custom fuel cell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, more of a gas tank. Yeah. You I know, see we that. call it You're gas right. tank. You're right. That's cool. Dang, I love it. The tips are all custom. It right is here. like a giant front arm, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's it goes sick. all the way to the tail shaft. It'll hook up good, I'm sure. Yeah. Some little big wheels. Big wheels operating. That's a wild build, dude. How, like, how many hours you got into this thing, you think? Uh, I don't know. We quit counting. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Years. It's going to be wild, though. It's yeah. going to be fast and fun, and it looks sick. All the factory gauges work, so we had all the factory gauges redone. To, oh, nice. So the tack works with the Holotech, the speedometer, everything. Oh, dang. That's yeah. cool. 
Well, I guess you would just program the output in the hull tack, right? Yeah. Well, the tack you have to convert. You put a stepper motor on because oh, it was cable right, drive. Oh, right. It was yeah. cable drive. Yeah, because it's so old. Same uh, with the speedometer. Yeah. They're cable drive, so they have certain like motors on them now. So, okay. I was gonna ask because I have a, I'm building an FBRX7 right now with like an REW motor in it, and I gotta get the tack to work, and it's cable. Mm -hmm. So I need to figure that out. So I did, like, does that company make that like Dakota oh, Digital? Hollywood speedometer. Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. Hollywood. And then this one uses a Dakota Digital box for that hardware. Got it, okay. Well, I need to do that because I'm not going to have a tech. Yeah. And then this car well, also out. has like an AIM data system in it for data logging. Yeah. Originally, he was going to run it in like the Optima. Street yeah. Challenge? Yeah. And now he's like, this car's way too bad. I was like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. yeah it's like, wait. I'll cruise it around the track. Yeah. yeah. This it's is, just too nice. Like, yeah. too like, many like this, silly this things like happen. Fuel filler. Come on. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Well, you're really not kidding. Yeah. Just be gentle. Yeah, you have to. You're not going to let the organ attendant put gas in this one. No way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, the organ attendant's <laughs> like, bang, 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 <laughs> yeah. breaks your $5,000 back window. Dude. And then they wear gloves, right? Yeah. And all of the stuff they touch is in the gloves, like not oil. I'm talking like dirt and sand. And they push your, your door to open yeah. it and scratch the shit out of it every time. Yeah. I'm like, go away. I'll yeah. pump my own gas. Like, oh, we can't. Our insurance. I'm like, I'm also insured. Yeah, it's really fine. Care. Go away. That guy needs your help. Yeah. I feel like such an asshole sometimes, but I'm like, just trust me on yeah. this one. Yeah. You know? So here you can see like where the cage comes through. Yeah, I was looking at that. And then the whole floor pan's obviously custom to clear everything. I was looking at a trans tunnel too. Yeah. It's a lot of Does it is the whole trans tunnel fabricated or is yeah. the top half stuff? No, the still? whole thing is. Dang. And if you see like this hardware from in here, all yeah. the fuel lines and everything run down the center. So we have like stainless steel heat shields. Ooh. And there wasn't enough distance to put a bolt in from the inside. Oh. So we had to do it from Thread, the outside. Yeah. Thread it in. So it's all rib nutted on the inside and then one person goes underneath. The other Got person it. comes inside the but car. But it's a street car. So you're only going to do that once. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not servicing those things. You're doing it once and then maybe like during your nut and bolt check yeah. after driving it the first time and it's yeah, good. Exactly. And after that, it gets car fit. No one ever knows that we spent three days doing that. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's apparent anyway. Yeah. Nobody's even going to know that you just spent probably months on the front and rear subframes on yeah. it. Except the guy driving it, like, oh, it actually steers. Yeah. I've never driven one of these in stock form, but I can't imagine it was the greatest thing ever. No. Yeah. That's cool. What a cool build. So we did the radiator from scratch, too. So this is Oh, I didn't even realize that. We just buy a CNR cord. Right, and build the end tank so it'll clear the hood and all that. Yeah. That's sick. I didn't even notice that. That's cool. Oh, this is that connecting thing, the shrink wrap style deal. Yeah. I've seen that before. Does it actually work? Most of the time. We're going to find out? Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> I just worked on other stuff. Like That's cool. Trucks. And I stuff. mean, this thing probably doesn't have a ton of coolant pressure anyway. It's no. like a street car engine. Yeah, it's NA. And I have seen this car many times, but never underneath it. It's actually pretty popular on the internet. It's got a lot of coverage on it. Yeah. So it's E46 wagon. Yep. S54. Yeah. All wheel drive. Yeah. That's like the Northwest dream. Yeah, exactly. It's a, 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 the proper built Subaru Outback. Yeah, exactly. It's a Subaru with like different rod bearing issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like oh six, my God. 60K rod bearing issues yeah, instead of like brand new rod bearing issues. Yeah, or head gasket problems. Yeah, no head, or yeah, yeah. oil. I guess these do have not really oiling problems, but so this they've one, got their own problems. The reason you see the front subframe down is because we, obviously on an all-wheel drive BMW, the axles go through the oil pan. Yeah. So it had an all-wheel drive oil pan, had oil issues. So now it has a custom built oil pan oh my God. that uses the S54 twin pickup pump with the return with the all-wheel drive. I never thought about that. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So you ran, what pan did you run before? Just an all-wheel drive pan. But like an S it bolted yeah. up to the S yeah. floor. Oh, okay. But yeah, not good for the S floor. No. Yeah, especially because I'm sure you have a two day thousand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's all wheel drive. So and when you have drive. not these tires on there, yeah. it pulls some G's. Yeah. That's crazy. How yeah. does it drive? Have you driven it? Yeah, I've driven it a lot. It's good? Yeah, it's good. I was surprised because it, it has obviously ride height for going off road and stuff. Right. It has like full skid plates that go under it, they're not on it right now. Got it. I thought 
I mean, the tires are obviously the limitation. Yeah, but that might but make it fun. I'll, honestly, driving it on the, the street, it's like totally fine. It's like way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a pig and it's not. It is cool though. Yeah. I mean, like, the problem with the E46, even in the CHP or whatever, 330, is that motor is so flat and emotionless. Yeah. Like, it's like, sure, it makes good torque, yeah. it's good power, it's flat, but it doesn't drive, like, anything fun. And the S54 is, like, one of the most fun engines yeah. to drive. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, I remember seeing this because FCP Euro did, like, a piece on it, I think, Probably. at some point, and I saw the build, and I'm like, oh, I've seen that car out front of their shop before. Yeah. So you guys did the build on this? Yeah. Well, it was already swapped when we got it. We just kind of redid everything. Oh, okay. It had like a tan interior, so we even did like an interior swap. It is like a, just a standard 330 rear subframe then. It's a, it's a standard 330 subframe, but it has a wave track in the back, and it actually has uh, like X5 diffs in it so that we could get a lower ratio. Oh, yeah. So it has a six-speed, which was pretty rare for the all-wheel drive, and then... Oh. Yeah, then Only the lower, like one year, right? Yeah, and then lower ratio diff front and rear to be matched. So what's in it, like a four or something? Or I'd have to look up. It was, it was years ago since we did that. Yeah. And I remember it was a huge headache because like WaveTrack didn't have a setup for the carrier that's in there because it's like a smaller ring and pinion. And they're like, right. why are you even doing that? Right? Right? And they're like, why are you doing that? And we're like, because we want to. Yeah, right. And that's how it always is. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, so real diff in the rear. And then six speed. S54. Yeah, I guess I take for granted thinking about that because yeah. you're like, oh, it's E46, it has that. Like, oh shit, no way, it's all-wheel drive. And then the pan, you're like, oh shit, that doesn't come on that engine. And then yeah. you're like, oh shit, the ratio sucks with six speed. And then you're like, oh damn, all this work. Yeah. And no one, I know if I don't think about it, no one's thinking about it. Well, and that was the <laughs> problem too. Even like, you know, like an, an M3 runs like, a, you know, the fans and everything are controlled by the ECU or like a normal E46, it has a fan control module, so we had to swap in all the oh, E46 nice. fans and everything, that way right. it all works. It didn't have the factory EKP module for the fuel pump, which is different on an M3, so I put that in because like DME controls the voltage down low. Correct. So like it cold starts normal, idles normal. That's cool. It didn't, like the pan didn't have like the You're oil change. You're pretty good at that nerdy stuff though. Yeah. That's what you like doing, I feel like. Yeah. Maybe not like, but that's, that's what, what I get end up doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what no one else wants to do, so I Well, because my it. car would just idled like shit when it was cold forever. Yeah. And then when I don't... And most it, people just live with it. And I would just slam the clutch fan on it and yeah. know with it. But he's yeah. like, nah. Yeah, we need the right fan so the AC works properly. Right. The only thing that... And like other stuff gets wild, like it has a custom uh, washer reservoir. Oh, right. Because, because the ABS module is right, right there. there. So it like, has, like, if you look, uh, you probably can't see it. It has, like, a built aluminum washer reservoir we built for it. Got the oh, you can see it on here. there. It's got the big. And he uses oh, the yeah. car. You know what I mean? He, like, oh, he drives it. Cause yeah. like, in that in that uh, post that I saw at FCP, he was mobbing it through the dirt, like, yeah. uh, being an asshole, which is what obviously it's what it's for. Yeah. Fancy oil pump gear. He's going to do another set of rod bearings while you're in there. Something like that. I checked them. I pulled okay. them apart. You can see there's a bunch of torque stripe because I okay, didn't. Cool. I didn't trust them, and then they're like brand new. So I was like, "That's fine. good." Yeah, we built this motor like a year ago or two. Okay. Ago. Sorry, it was all brand new. When you say built, like just refreshed it to stock, like it's TP got, piston. Oh, okay. Like it had a bad rod in it. Oh, okay. Like on, after one of his trips. So. What kind of power does it make then? Like 330. Somewhere we tried dynoing it, and it like we weren't using a linked dyno, and oh. so the front and the rear diff were like I didn't want to tear stuff out, yeah. so we just stopped. Newer stuff, you can just undo the front diff, like the front drive lines, yeah. like a BMW, or unplug but it. You can't do it. With you this. can't do it with this. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so you need a link dyno. Yeah, but then also with like the tires, they're not really huge fans of the dyno either because they're soft and oh, stuff. Oh yeah. So it's like clap them out. Yeah, it's like it was kind of getting into a weird I area. See that. Yeah. I mean, it should be like 330 to 350 yeah. wheel. Yeah, it's somewhere around there. It has like, headers. Yeah, it I was looking at headers, there. stock airbox and stuff. Or, yeah, yeah, it had a colder intake, but he was like sucking too much stuff. I was so going to say, the stock airbox is a stock air, but like actual yeah. air filter box. Yeah. It's so got to be the way with the dirt stuff. <laughs> yeah, we did a stock air box, and you can't really see, but it has a big splash pan so water doesn't go oh, up in it because nice. he like fords rivers with it. Oregon Trail, dude, Florida yeah. River. And then this is like, you know, race car stuff, but it's like, you're gonna get stuck, so this goes up in the bumper. Oh, Obviously, we nice. it in, but then you pull it out, and now you can tow the car without getting under That's it. That's cool. Because you got your license plate where your tow hook goes. Yeah. But you're gonna get it stuck. So. That's really cool. 
Yeah, this was a really cool build. That's nice to know all the extra little details in it because that you never really think about it. Yeah. But yeah, I would imagine a 330XI oil pan would be trash for an S54 because you'd have to run the pickup tube from the old other motor too. Yeah, and so you run like an S52 oil pump and then a rear pickup. That's the new pickup. You can see I had to like hand make that basket. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then the pan is like pretty ugly right now because it was like Dude. no problem. No, you probably can't see, but it's full. Oh, yeah, full uh, and then tray there. There's like trap doors in it. Nice. And then you have to put like the drain fittings on it. And then this is where the axles go. Just like 50, 60 hours of work. Oh, right yeah, there. I'm looking at it all right. <laughs> Maybe 100. We don't want to know. Yeah. And it didn't fit the first time because of the steering rack, so you redo it and... Oh yeah, the whole front part. Yeah. It's got that little lip. And then the power uh, steering pump bolts to it. Yeah, oh yeah. So you gotta like make oh, a mount my the power gosh. steering pump. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep, so you're like, oh, it's just a motor that came in an E46 <laughs> yeah. and a transmission that came in an E46, but none of it actually really works proper. You could have cruised around and probably been fine, but when you drive it hard, you gotta have it be right. Yeah. What the heck, what is a bitter? It's a German car. Yeah, it looks like a German <laughs> slash Italian car. It was like a mass produced low production car. It like has like an Opel engine, Audi electronics, and then a bunch of weird German I think stuff. they're probably good. Scary. Nah. <laughs> Wait, okay, so what, hold on, let's go back to this thing. Oh, I've never heard of a bitter in my life. Sounds like a bitter story, yeah, it honestly. It's pretty sad. So it's... German, well, it's like it looks like kind of like a Lotus thing. A lot of people confuse it for like a Ferrari when it's on the ground or like yeah. a yeah. It's like one of like 470. Like Bertone style type deal. Yeah. yeah. What, what is this supposed to be? Like a Autobahn cruiser to work? I mean, it's just like really expensive car. You know, like a they are crazy expensive? Yeah. I don't even know this. Shit. They were. Like when they were new, they were like, you know, now they don't exist. So is like, it like a Bricklin or something? Like, yeah. uh -huh. It has what, like what engines in it? An Opal and like this. This gets weirder and weirder. Yeah. Okay. It, like uh, I figured it was like a V8 because I saw this. No, now I'm looking at it all. It's like an inline six. The electronics are like identical to like the Alfa Romeos I've worked on. Okay. Like the same ECU. So they're awful then. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So this is uh, everything uh, positive triggered. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite, but close. Yeah. It's got an engine damper built into the motor mount. Oh yeah, check that out. These motor mounts Look are the that. same as an E28, we found out. <laughs> Look at that. It's got a damper. They built it and they're like, man, we need a little more. I think it's a bogey too. Oh, it's got the same suspension as an S13, so, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a drift car, actually. It's basically a drift car. Yeah, it's got like messed up tow hooks, so you know. Oh, it's been towed a few times. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's got a drag wing. You're calling the tow truck company. I'm like, hey, can you pick my bitter up? Yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> Try again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's cool because it's rare. I just don't know anything about it. It's got trailing arms. I was expecting inboard brakes, honestly. No, that's the Jag. Yeah. The jag or that. Very weird. That's oh, got the little 044 pump set up going on here. Yeah. Weird. I kind of want to see it on the ground, but I'll just Google one and we'll put the image here. It saves us a lot of effort. Yeah. So this is cool. Looks like the little cup. This is a 911 motor? Yeah. 86 911 Like motor. a 3 liter or something? Yeah, 3 liter. Oh, twin spark too. Yeah. What, what's the deal with it? So I'm like new to the Porsche stuff and I'm like being an air cooled nerd because it's like cool to do that on the internet or something yeah. Yeah. right now. Um, well, first it's a techno gate oil. Right. Yeah. You're right. Oil. You're right. That's actually exactly right. Um, so that's 86 three liter. Yeah. So it's like 200 and change. Yeah. I don't. It came to us from another shop, so we don't really know if it like has cams or anything. But, but it's in a 914. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is the first car I ever drove on the street ever in my life. With a four or a six? It was a four. Nice. No, it was a six. Yeah. It was. And it was like an old X race car that my buddy had. Mm -hmm. And I was like. His dad was gone. We were like 12 or 13 years old, and yeah. we're like, let's take the Porsche out. Yeah. And we almost crashed it trying to get it out of the garage because we didn't know how to drive stick. And we drove it. It was 
felt like the fastest thing I'd ever been on because I'd yeah. only like ridden my bike at that point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. like it had similar body kit to this, but it had like a very 70s like livery on yeah. it and stuff. And I remember it because I, we like literally almost crashed it about 10 times before we got out on the street Great, to actually yeah. drive in. We were like, just put it back in the garage. Yeah. Like, nah, we're gonna go for a <laughs> rip, you know? So this is neat though. It's got some fancy taillight stuff. And it's like a resto mod build or is yeah. that? Yeah, it's got like, you know, the interior's been all redone. Sized up wheels and tires, 245s. And this is like a factory style kit, right? Or no? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Because yeah. these are on a lot of 944, 914, yeah. I mean. The key with Porsche stuff is like whatever you say, someone will say you're wrong. Oh, they, so of you course. just like say I think so on okay. everything. Yeah. That's good. That's Porsche guy. I'm like. learning. Yeah, it's I'm like learning. I think so. Because someone will, will reach out to you and tell you you're wrong. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. It's cool though, I like looking at older Porsche stuff because like all the little race car bits, even if they're new, they build them to look like old school yeah. stuff. So these and seats like, are sick, yep. door pulls nice, but like the way the belts mount up and do all that, it's like kind of, is that the right way? Not anymore, but back then it probably was yeah. the right way. Shifter assembly, that's probably a new one. Yeah. Like a fancy one. Like a Wevo style. Yeah, but it looks yeah. like the OG stuff. Yep. They do a good job of doing that. Like this plate right here is probably not factory. No. That's but not. it looks kind of like how it should be. This thing's gotta be pretty good. Yeah. Is the suspension on these like worth a shit or no? Uh, it depends on if you like change them. Like the style, like the stock is like not good. I'm not saying stock parts, I'm saying stock mounting points and stock all that stuff. It's decent, like the bigger thing, you have to like correct all the bump steer and everything because people lower them. Right. And, and that's normal. Yeah, right? that's normal when it's like torque So you do that. So, okay. Oh, it is torque. Yeah, and like you can like depending on how old the car is, like the front tub rots out or they get pulled out or it is torsion. This one might be converted, I don't know. So they convert into a coilover. Yeah, you can, but then your shock tower. Yeah, what do like you do with that? Well, like it just eventually breaks or <laughs> or so you gotta run like a, a reinforcement or something. Okay, so it's a very big project. I was just curious, so when you lower these and you get them to a point where the CG is decent and stuff, then the geometry is bad. You need to add some sort of new uh, tension rod, basically. No, I, I, I mean, those are okay. It's usually like changing like uh, tie rod mounting points, steering rack. Right, to lower it. Yeah, move the gears up on the strut if you have to. Got it. And the racks, oh, these are rear steer, I assume. Yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, there's got to be easy to move the rack. In yeah, these it's like literally like two spacers. Yeah, yeah like right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And there's nothing in the way of anything. Yeah, the fuel pump. The fuel I, pump's like in that general area. I don't know if it's me or like just maybe drifting drifters, but like uh, mid-engine cars are the best cars to me to drive. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm not saying like I need a Ferrari in my life or a Lambo or any of that shit, but like every mid-engine car I've ever driven, I'm like, this is how a car is supposed to drive. Yeah. I'm not even really a mid-engine rear guy, but like, I feel like this would be perfect and fun to drive. Yeah. And this, they just come with no power stop. It's brutal. Yeah, yeah. So that's regular. probably, yeah. and that probably keeps the emotion of the car similar. Yeah. Like it's still, it's just more of everything. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Cause it like keeps it all in the, mm -hmm. in the car. And then just, I assume there's another hole cut of the backside to let the air out. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick. Well, underneath is where the, AC condenser would have been if it had one. Okay. And so there's like usually a screen and some like hardware. Got it. So. Oh right. So you would just you exit it out of that. Yeah, because like obviously cool. 911s they have the oil coolers in the fenders, the fenders and pop yeah. out headlights and stuff. Don't let air flow in. Yep. So. Yeah, I thought that was cool. I'm not, I'm, I don't know much about these. Like I was saying, so yeah. it's like that looks like such a cool, simple little piece. And now I'm like, ah, that could be cool to do in something else. Yeah. Like, because it makes it contained. Yeah. <laughs> Your beetle looks kind of sick. Okay, so fuel injected newer engine. Yep. That fits in there. I had to make a slight Shh. firewall modification. This reminds me of like the old uh, 20 valve swaps for Corollas back yeah. in the day because the distributors on the back of the head. Yeah. So you just cut a huge hole in there and you could adjust the time. Passenger could adjust yeah. the timing. It's like the old hot rod through the small block Chevy. Right. Good catch. That's cool. So originally, you know, we had the intake flopped because you can flop them, and then we're just oh. on the intake. But then he wanted air conditioning, 
So it had to go. So the it other had way. to go the other way. So you have to cut a hole, and then it's water cooled now. So we like custom built radiator hoses, you know, to get, in, to get it around. Yep. Water line. So it's basically a 996 now. Pretty much. It's not know. oil cooled. The interior it's is nicer cooled. than a 996, okay. but other than that. Yeah. And the headlights work better. It's probably a bit stiffer than a 996, <laughs> yeah, even. That too. Yeah. Have you seen when they put the gooseneck ball on the top of these? And yeah. they have a trailer yeah, that's nice shaped here. like it? Yeah. My brain Why can't not? even. I, right. Why not? Why would they do that? Why not? <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. So it's gonna be AC, fuel injected, so it'll actually be pretty reliable. Not that the other ones weren't that reliable. They no, just ran like crap all the time. Yeah, they're just slow and <sighs> no slow. air conditioning. If you turned on the air conditioning, like you're not climbing a hill at that point. You're probably not going 65 on the yeah, flat. No. That's funny. So yeah, this will cruise around pretty, it's probably actually pretty fast. What is that, like 140, 150 yeah, horsepower? Yeah, somewhere around there. Put some tires on there, you'll probably get it to wheelie. Yeah. Your friends can just stand on the back to get it to do it. That's pretty cool. Sweet. A lot of rad projects here. I'm excited to come over. I was like, I know, sometimes I come here and there's like mostly stock cars being worked on and then I'll come three weeks later and it's all race cars everywhere nonstop. So, sweet. Thanks for the tour, dude. I yep. appreciate it. Good luck with everything and all yep. the racing and the chassis building. Bam! <laughs>